Our first reading is a reading from the book of Sirach. God sets a father in honor over his children, a mother's authority he confirms over her sons. Whoever honors his father atones for sins and perseveres himself from them. When he prays, he is heard. He stores up riches, who reveres his mother. Whoever honors his father is gladdened by children, and when he prays, is heard. Whoever reveres his father will live a long life. He who obeys his father brings comfort to his mother. My son, take care of your father when he is old. Grieve him not as long as he lives. Even if his mind fail, be considerate of him. Revile him not all the days of his life. Kindness to a father will not be forgotten, firmly planted against the debt of your sins, a house raised in justice to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, put on as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If one has a grievance against another, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also do. And over all these, put on love. That is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace into which you were also called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in all wisdom you teach and admonish one another, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Uh-huh. 
your ancestors through the prophets. In these last days he has spoken to us through the Son. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. When the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, they took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. God calls us to be his family. We begin our lives in a family, either biologically or through adoption, and we form families through marriage. This basic relationship of the biological family with a mother, father, and children is given to us throughout scripture. It's the building block of society. A family is called to be a place of loving forgiveness based upon trust. It's a sanctuary, a sacred place, where love and the social and moral virtues are cultivated. The relationship of family, really in any relationship, is being challenged on all sides. Divorce rates are very high. Many people spend their lives in multiple relationships without even marrying in the eyes of the church. Civil society loses this meaning, which formerly was so surrounded by extended relatives, cousins, aunts and uncles, and friends, often in a very close vicinity. We as Catholics are challenged to continue to encourage the basic reality of a family, of a mother, father, and children, to encourage marriage as it exists between a man and a woman, between Christians as a sacrament, a sacred bond lived out in Jesus Christ and in his mystical body, the Church. It's very clear that when the family is attacked, children suffer the most. The modern Western world displays a mentality that is deeply flawed and gravely harmful to our young people. It's a result of the willful and sinful habits of many adults in the area of human sexuality, marriage, and family life. The rebellion against the plan and order of God has caused so much grief and hardship, and it's led to a cultural environment that's poisonous to the proper raising and rearing of children. Many children today no longer have that stable and lasting family unit that they justly deserve, with a mother, father, and relatives committed to one another. In particular, mother and father committed to one another until death do they part. All of this misbehavior really impacts children the most. Not being raised in a traditional marriage can often increase the likelihood of a child to suffer many other ills, including poverty. It's never possible to judge every instance of a broken family, though, in a sweeping fashion. We have experienced a cultural tsunami in the last 60 years or so. So many have been influenced by lies and false promises. If you have been divorced, maybe you may have tried very valiantly to save your marriage, but your spouse was unwilling. Maybe in a moment of weakness, you may have succumbed to temptation, and maybe if a child was born out of wedlock, you may have done your best to raise your child in the right way. The Gospel from St. Luke today is about the presentation of our Lord in the temple. Here we have Our Lady and St. Joseph presenting their child, along with two elderly people in the temple, Simeon and Anna, who were waiting for salvation, who were able to see in Jesus Christ the fulfillment of all of these prophecies. Living the Christian meaning of the family is not about attacking anyone, far from it. It is, if anything else, a call to live more profoundly as a Christian family, to know well and to speak clearly about the teachings of Christ and his church on the family. We might consider some traits from our Lord's hidden life. 
First of all, his family was poor, but they weren't destitute. They were able to travel to Jerusalem for the major feasts. Our use of material things should be patterned in a very similar way to the Holy Family who lived a very moderate life. Our Lord worked as a carpenter before his public ministry. We wonder then at the humility of God, the creator of the heavens and earth, who humbled himself to be taught by one of his creatures how to function as a carpenter. Another characteristic of our Lord's hidden life is his obedience to Our Lady and to St. Joseph. He was subject to them. He kept the old law perfectly. The heart and soul of that holy family was, of course, mutual love and respect. Love for God first, and then because of that, love for one another. This love fosters peace and harmony, forgiveness and reconciliation. Certainly, when we understand God's plan for the human family, it must be based upon those principles, the image of the holy family. Remembering, of course, that our human sexuality is rooted in the procreation of children. There's not a legitimate use for it outside of marriage. There are no exceptions. Children deserve and have the right to expect a mother and a father committed to one another until death. And indeed, as well, we should also recognize as well that same-sex unions are not an acceptable alternative to the sacrament of holy matrimony. To subject children to this for political correctness or for the perceived needs of adults does them a grave injustice. Married couples are called to work, about, work out their differences, to, as was done in so many generations before us, to the best of their ability not heading for divorce court at the first possible moment. The needs of children far outweigh the preferences and needs of adults. Marriage is always about what is best for the children. We pray, of course, for those many families in stressful situations. They're far more common than one might think. Whether they're pains or sorrows, or even families at the point of breaking up, we pray for those battling with miscarriages or infertility, that God will bless them with the gift of children, whether it be naturally or through the loving choice of adoption. We pray for those people who bring sadness into a family on account of substance abuse, or states that put up barriers against Christian living. We pray for God's grace upon all of those couples preparing for marriage and for newlyweds that our Lord who brought cheer and happiness to a marriage at the wedding of Cana may always renew the joy of family life. May every family without fail always be an icon or an image of the most holy family of Nazareth, St. Joseph, Our Lady, and our Lord Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace who brings with us the blessings of heavenly peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, amen. For the Church, defender of the well-being and unity of families, we pray to the Lord. Lord For public safety officials who seek the protection and safety of families, 
we pray to the Lord. For all who are sick, that they be touched by the healing power of Jesus, their brother, we pray to the Lord. For all who have died, especially Norman and Pauline Bro, Jeanette Boyas, Rita Glode, and Noel Lapierre, that they are reunited with their families in heaven, we pray to the Lord. The second collection this weekend is for parish maintenance.
us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, gracious, and grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope that the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For the King and the power of the Lord. Oh uh-huh. 
Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. May our defense against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God be you to the humbly pray. And do thou, the Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits from the proud of all the sickly souls. Thank you. 